Well, he is the self-made tech billionaire making headlines for his bold move to take over Australian energy giant AGL and fast-track our way to a sustainable future. At the age of 23, Mike Cannonbrooks co-founded software firm Atlassian on a bootstrap budget. Fast forward 20 years and the company is worth more than $100 billion, boasting NASA, Tesla and SpaceX as customers. Now, one of the nation's richest people, the Sydney-based father of four is encouraging bosses to speak out on environmental issues. In 2017, he notably lost a $50 million bet with fellow billionaire Elon Musk over fixing South Australia's renewable energy issue. Now, he wants to buy Australia's largest energy company, shut down its coal plants and bring forward its net zero emissions target by 12 years. It's a bold move, but one, people say, is a Cannon Brooks special. <laughs> And the man himself, Mike Cannon-Brooks, joins us now live from the Southern Highlands in New South Wales. You little troublemaker, you, Mike, eh? <laughs> hey, you going, Got to keep it interesting, Carl. Yeah, I know. Look, um, look, you are interesting. We just heard from the Treasurer. Uh, he said it's, it's going to cost jobs your plan and won't guarantee supply. How do you respond? Um, <laughs> I'm not sure what he's talking about, to be honest. Uh, look, our goal is to create an awful lot of jobs in doing this. We're bringing $20 billion, which is what the Treasurer has asked us to do, in terms of replacing these plants as they uh, get to the end of their useful life, which is exactly what we're planning to do. And we're planning to replace it with renewables and storage and a whole lot of, lot of smart technologies to bring people's bills down. So you have the cheapest power you've had in eight years, because our grid is now 30% renewable, mm. if that percentage of renewables keeps going up and we do that faster, your bill will go down quicker. And that's exactly what we're intending to do. Um, we have to deliver power to the customers of AGL. That's that's the job of the company. So that's what we will be doing. Mm. So this is where I think sort of people then sit at home and, and, and are a bit confused because you say that and that makes complete sense. You're saying basically you can su um, guarantee supply and that prices will come down. But then you've got mm -hmm. these voices um, uh, from the government side, the PM, the Energy Minister and the Treasurer, saying something entirely different. So, so how is it that, that, that you're so far from being on the same page in regards to this? Um, look, we've, we've put up a plan. We've uh, got a lot of people working on this for the last almost six months. Uh, it's very thought through. I haven't heard any actual attacks on the plan or, or comments on our facts or figures. Um, secondly, we're doing what the government has asked us to do, provide replacement capacity, bring $20 billion in private capital to do that, and uh, reliably bring people's bills down. We will be doing all three of these things. And so I, uh, I think we're checking the boxes that they've asked us to check and they should be big fans of the plan. Um, just in regards to, to one of those aspects, uh, I think some of these people who live uh, and work, and there's generations of them in some mm -hmm. sectors, um, who have, um, have work in coal mines in and around them and these communities, um, do you guarantee that we won't lose, I'm sure you're sympathetic, um, any jobs in that capacity? Look, it's, it's, Carl, there's no doubt it's going to be a transition, right? And so we have to work with those communities. What we're saying is there's a plan here. Mm. So we're looking at this over the next eight years and we would continue to work with all of those communities. There would need to be some retraining, I'm sure, of some parts. I'm sure there'd be people who'd be worried, be happy to talk to them. I'm sure we would as part of the plan. Um, there's 10,000 to 12,000 new jobs created as a result of this. We're spending $20 billion on building a whole lot of new infrastructure and smart technologies not just in those areas where there's currently coal plants, but almost all over rural New South Wales and Victoria. So those jobs would be spread far and wide, which is great for a lot of those regional communities. Um, in the actual areas here, uh, there would be a net transition of those jobs, right? Some of the jobs are gonna be repurposable. If you're a tradie or an electrician or a maintenance uh, person, those jobs are still gonna be required in the new infrastructure that we're gonna have to build. There are gonna be some jobs that are gonna require retraining, um, but we have a lot of time to work with those individuals work with those groups to, to transition this over time. But net net, uh, all of those people are also going to get lower power bills uh, and we're going to create uh, far more jobs than uh, are lost in this transition. And when you talk about those jobs that are being created, are those jobs just for the initial like construction phase or will they be ongoing jobs? Uh, there's an awful lot of ongoing jobs as well. Uh, so we think there's somewhere between 600 plus ongoing jobs. There's currently about a thousand existing jobs. Uh, there'll be 10,000 plus construction jobs and that's not counting all of the uh, other jobs that happen around that. Uh, again, we're going to continue to sharpen our pencils on this. I deeply believe that it'll be uh, a vast net job creator 
uh, in doing this. And we're talking eight to 10 years worth of, of uh, build out here. So uh, it's, it's a very positive story um, that we're Depending on, what, depending on what renewable you go with, um, I guess it uh, depends on how many jobs are going to be associated with that particular one. Um, look, you're coming into this ready for a fight. In an election year, you know exactly what you're doing. I'm telling the Fin Review, I have the luxury of not being a politician, so I get to speak in facts and science, not fables and stories. This was the response of the Treasurer to that. When Hazelwood uh, closed uh, in Victoria, that was about a quarter of the energy supply. Uh, and what that saw was a spike of around 85% in the wholesale electricity price. Victoria suddenly went from being a net energy exporter to being an energy importer, particularly from New South Wales mm. at times of high demand. We welcome more investment in renewables, but we also have a responsibility to tell it as it is, which is that Australia needs to maintain the stability of our grid and the affordability of power. OK. Your response to that one, Mike? He's entirely correct. He's just leaving out a few facts. Um, when Hazelwood closed, it was very fast. There was no notice given to the market. They've put in a three-year rule minimum, three and a half years. You have to give notice, which is exactly what Origin did last week. And we're giving eight years notice. That lets the private markets bring in a lot of replacement capacity. The problem with Hazelwood disappeared. There wasn't a replacement capacity available. So demand met supply and price went up. With enough notice period, which is exactly what the government has put in, that won't happen. That won't happen with Liddell, uh, which is closing in a couple of years. It won't happen with any of these new plants. So what happened in Hazelwood won't happen again, firstly. Secondly, technology has moved on. Renewables are 10 plus years cheaper than they were at that point. So we can generate far cheaper energy than we can with these plants that were built approximately like when man landed on the moon. We didn't have computers, we didn't have mice, we didn't have laptops, none of this stuff. Our iPads, iPhones existed when these plants were built. We can do this a lot cheaper nowadays. We know how to do this. This is technology we already have, and that's exactly what we're planning to do. All he said about reliability and uh, price is exactly what we're planning to do. That is our plan. We're in 100% agreement there. Well, it sounds like uh, you're on a course. Uh, the only issue that Ali and I can see, Mike, um, is that, that you have, um, you've already gone to AGL, they've rejected um, your first round offer, and now they're fully aware of how much you want that company. Are you going to be paying overs? <laughs> we're well aware of the value we're providing for shareholders. We're well aware of our plan and what it will cost to execute. We've thought through this very much so. We keep engagement with the company and with the shareholders of the company, and um, uh, you've probably had a few uh, exchanges in your own life, Carl, where the first offer hasn't been uh, the one that was accepted. <laughs> So there's well, a little more well. in the kitty is what we're hearing. <laughs> Good to talk to you, Mike. Uh, why, why, just finally before we go, uh, why, why are you so involved? Why are you so passionate and why should people believe you? Look, I, I'm well on record. I think the decarbonisation transition, so moving us away from fossil fuel-based technologies broadly, is the greatest economic opportunity facing Australia across all sectors of our economy. And uh, it's one thing to talk about that. It's another to go do it. I happen to have been very fortunate and lucky in my life so far and able to put that, uh, um, that luck towards uh, taking action on some of these changes, right? Australians, we have pride ourselves in our ability to get out and just do things. Um, and that's exactly what we're doing here. We're well aware we have to provide cheaper power. We have to make sure that it works when you want to turn on a light. And um, mm -hmm. we have all the technology to do that today. We don't need to invent any new technology. And so we're going to go do it. Mm. Well, you're bold and you're passionate. And it's a pretty powerful combination, Mike. We really appreciate your time this morning. Thank you. Thanks for having me, guys. That's a private sector solution, uh, front and mm. centre now, as we head into an election campaign. A bit to get through this morning. Um, tech billionaire Mike Cannon-Brooks is vowing to push ahead with his mm. plan to buy AGL and close down its coal-fired power stations. Jeez, we like the cut of this guy's jib. Um, he has uh, a war chest of $2 billion to reinvest <laughs> coal-free um, AGL. Um, why wouldn't you support that takeover? Well, firstly, the shareholders of AGL, uh, Carl, need to support this takeover, and that's obviously got a long way to run because the initial comments from the board have not been um, supportive. Uh, it would also need to go through the, the regulatory approval but process. No doubt the competition regulator would look at it. Well, in principle, we understand that there's a transition across the energy system. Indeed, we've been encouraging it. Uh, we've invested record amounts in renewable energy. One in four Australian households have solar panels on their roofs. So people are actually voting with their feet. But what our responsibility is as a government is to reduce emissions, 
but also to ensure that energy and electricity particularly is affordable and that the system is reliable. But, but he says, and the case in point he, is he, what happened. He says he can do it a lot quicker. He denies all this, vehemently denies it. He says there won't hmm. be any supply issues. He says bills will not go higher. He says the aged assets are the problems. He says, quote, I have the luxury of not being a politician, so I get to speak facts and science and economics, not fables and stories. It sounds to me like you're getting spooked by a credible private sector solution. Well, Carl, let me give you an indisputable fact. When Hazelwood uh, closed uh, in Victoria, that was about a quarter of the energy supply. Uh, and what that saw was a spike of around 85% in the wholesale electricity price. Victoria suddenly went from being a net energy exporter to being an energy importer, particularly from New South Wales mm. at times of high demand. Now, the people who pay the most as a proportion of their income for higher electricity prices are the more disadvantaged members mm. of our community. So we welcome more investment in renewables, but we also have a responsibility to tell it as it is which is that Australia needs to maintain the stability of our grid and the affordability of power. OK, we'll put that to him. He's coming up in about 10 and look, minutes' and, time. And, and, okay. That would be good, Carl, because over the last two years, electricity prices in Australia have fallen gone, by yeah. 8%, but under Labor, they double. And I get protecting jobs in some of those markets. Um, it's, it, it is important, that transition. He says he can do it quicker. We'll put it to him in 10 minutes' time.